Hey, hey, today we're talking about cardio and fat loss. Now, when people normally think, think of this, they think, okay, my goal is fat loss. I must do as much cardio as I humanly possibly can. And that's a very bad approach. That's like taking a hammer and trying to fix everything with it. Cardio is a tool in your fat loss toolbox. Now, the main tool you want to use is your diet. So being in a calorie deficit, which I've already taken to, into account, with, is going to be the biggest tool you can use. For some people, they might not even need to do cardio. The calorie deficit is going to be enough. But for some people, when they hit a plateau and stuff like that, that just means we're ready for the next step. Maybe we need to add in a little bit of cardio. So how do you, how do you attack cardio and fat loss? Well, this is my approach. And it's an approach of a lot of coaches around. And it's a lot better than going balls to the wall right out the gate. And I'll tell you why later. So what I like to do is I like to take what I like to call the lazy man's approach and do the minimum effective dose. I don't know why my forearm is so itchy. Um, and take the minimum effective dose of cardio needed. So what we're going to do is we'll take 20 minutes of walking on a treadmill at, say, a three speed and we'll set the incline to a five. So it's not super high incline, you know, you just, just so you have to lean uh, forward a little bit and we'll do that for a week. And then the following week, we will do 20 minutes of, of uh, treadmill walking at the five incline, but we'll bump up the speed to 3.5, which is, you'll notice it at first, but it's not that much faster. It's not like going from a walk to a jog. It's like going from a walk to a slightly faster walk. So, and then after that, uh, week three, we would do 20 minutes of cardio. We would do, we bump up the incline to like a six, and then we bump, we take down the speed down to like a three. And then the week, the week after that, keep that the six incline, 20 minutes, and we go up to 3.5. And we just keep ratcheting up like that. And the reason for this is because when you do cardio, your body is a very, very smart piece of machinery. It's built for survival. So when you give that stimulus of cardio, your body wants to adapt because it doesn't like to burn a ton of calories because it's built for survival. It sees it as you're burning a ton of calories. Oh shit, we got to do something to kind of get things back in check. And your body will become more efficient at running. Your form will become better as you progress because you know, practice makes perfect. And you're, you'll actually like internally, your lungs will expand, which will allow for more oxygen to come in. It'll, you'll be better at transporting oxygen from your lungs to your blood, to your muscles, to help you, you know, get through that lactic acid in the very beginning. And your body makes a lot of these changes very quickly when it comes to cardio. So if you take that balls to wall approach, that's all fine and great in week one. But then week two, you're not burning as many calories because you become, you're becoming more efficient. Week three, you're burning even less calories because your body is becoming even more efficient. And, you know, by the time like you hit week five and week six, it's like you almost have to do that much cardio because you're not getting that much of a calorie deficit from your, your diet. So don't worry. I already factored all that in there. And with my approach to, to fat loss, to, uh, sorry, to cardio. So I already factored all that in there. You don't have to worry about it, but it's just information. So if you try, don't do too much cardio all at once. Use it as a tool. There's a certain spot for each tool and you have to use it accordingly. So that's my approach to cardio and fat loss. And yeah, that's pretty much about it. All right, talk to you later.